uh, yep. take, take you to, let's talk about the consensus algorithm and how it works. Okay. Can you uh, start by explaining how gossip about gossip works and particularly yeah. what's new about that because we've heard of the gossip protocol before. Sure. So how's the algorithm work? How does gossip about gossip work? How does the protocol work? Uh, all that stuff. We've heard about gossip before. Yes, we've heard about gossip before. There are lots of places where gossip is used. Gossip just means that the computers randomly call each other. You just pick another computer and you talk to it and you tell it everything you know that it doesn't already know. And then you pick another random computer and you tell it everything it knows that you know that it doesn't know. And so you have some kind of a handshake where you decide, well, what do you know that I know, don't know and vice versa. That's a gossip protocol. Why is it so popular in computer science? Because it is incredibly fast and resilient. It, it spreads like wildfire. I mean, how fast does a juicy rumor spread through the grapevine in a typical office? That's the gossip protocol. I tell two friends who tell two friends who tell two friends and exponentially fast the whole world knows. How resilient is it? Well, what if one computer turns off? Does it still work? Of course, it blows up exponentially fast. Even if you shut down a bunch of computers, it still blows up exponentially fast. It spreads like wildfire. In fact, wildfire spreads geometrically. This is exponentially. This is even better. This is like n-dimensional wildfire. So gossip protocols are great. Now, what are they used for? I think the original one decades ago was uh, something related to identities, actually, you know, gossiping a, an address book. Uh, you can use it to gossip transactions for a Bitcoin or for something else. You could use it to gossip any kind of information you're interested in. You could even draw a picture of how we've all gossiped to each other. You know, history. Saying, well, at first I gossiped to you, and then I gossiped to him while you were gossiping to her, and then she gossiped to him who gossiped to her, and you could just have this entire graph, this directed acyclic graph, showing the entire history of gossip. I usually would show a picture like that at this point if I was talking about it, and I say, this picture could be drawn for any gossip protocol, but nobody ever actually draws this picture, because why would you? Um, for one thing, you don't actually know how everybody talks in a network. I know who I've talked to, but I don't know how other people have talked. But what if the thing that you're gossiping is that picture itself? What if you are gossiping the actual history of gossip? Now, this sounds strangely self-referential, very navel-gazing here. We are going to gossip not about facts, not about data. We're going to gossip about gossip. I'm going to tell you something I know. And then I'm going to tell him something I know. And what I'm going to tell him is that I just talked to you. And then I'm also going to tell him something I know, which is going to be that I talked to you two guys. Not only that, who you talked to and who they talked to before. The whole history going back to all the beginning of time. Wait a second. Doesn't that take an enormous amount of bandwidth? No. Turns out that if I, every time I talk to you, I create a little packet, a little message, and that message remembers who I talked to last and what the last message was that he created. That's it. Also, this message will contain the last, uh, we'll have to remember the last message that I created. So what we do is each message just has to remember two other messages, the names of them. We use cryptographic hashes. Each message just has to contain two hashes of messages that contain two hashes of messages that contain two hashage, ha hashes. And when I send you this message, all I'm sending you are two hashes. But if I send you all the messages that I know that you don't, then all these messages spread exponentially fast. And once you have a big pile of messages, you just look at all the pointers between them and you can rebuild the entire history. And while I'm at it, I might as well put some transactions in there. And now the transactions spread exponentially fast. And what's the overhead? Well, the overhead is I have this little list of transactions plus two hashes and we're done. I've added almost no overhead to the protocol. If all I wanted to do was make sure that everybody knew all the transactions, I would have to send the transactions out and I'd have to digitally sign them and I might put a timestamp on them. I would have to do that if all I cared about was getting people the transactions. But by just adding two hashes to that message, suddenly you see a picture of how everyone in all of history has talked to each other in what order, the exact pattern. And for any given transaction, you can follow its entire history of how it went to these two people and then each of them told these two people and then they told these people and you can just watch how it spread through the entire network. And for two transactions, you can see how both of them spread through the entire network and you can see which one reached everyone first. 
And then you could say, hey, I think this transaction ought to count as being before this one because this one reached everybody before this one reached everybody. But wait, I'm saying that by looking at this picture of history, but you're gonna have the same picture of history because we're just gossiping these messages. You're gonna get the same message as I do. So in my view of history, this transaction ought to come before this one. Well, in your view of history, it's the same because we have the same view. We have the same picture of history. We have the same algorithm. And interesting. If we have the same picture of history and the same algorithm, we'll come up with the same answer. We have consensus. We're done. Wow, that's it. Turns out there's some little details that are kind of tricky and I spent a month figuring out the details, but you can figure them out. And then you have to make math proofs that prove it all works. That took some more time, but we have that. And then you have to implement it. Well, that takes a while, but we have that. And what we have now is something that is asynchronous Byzantine, which is the strongest possible security proof. And it's fair in the ordering, which nothing has. And it is fast. Hundreds of thousands of transactions a second are easy. Why is it fast? Well, it's using gossip, which is the fastest thing I can think of. You're pushing out all of your transactions, which you're going to have to do in a replicated state machine. There's no way around it. And then you're adding, you know, 1% more bytes. And that's it. Tiny bit of overhead. No votes. No blocks being mined. No solving crypto puzzles. No one person is a leader even for a moment that you might DDoS attack and shut down. It's totally chaotic, totally random. Everybody's doing their own thing. And we all come to the answer almost instantly. That's what Hashgraph is. But you know, it's possible that sometime somebody's going to give me one more event in my graph that goes way back early in history. So my graph might just for a moment look slightly different from yours. And we might disagree for just a moment on when it reached absolutely everyone. So the tricky part is to make sure that we never end up disagreeing. And that's the Byzantine fault tolerance thing. And that involves having famous witnesses and having rounds of voting and having coin rounds and doing whitening of your signatures and all that stuff. But it's all just coming down to the basic idea of well, your transaction counts as having reached the community when it reaches everyone. And I know when it reached everyone because I can look at the hash graph and we all have the same hash graph. And theoretically, we could each have a tiny difference in our hash graph for just a moment. Yeah. And I had to do a lot of math to handle that. But a lot of math works and it can handle it. Awesome. Okay. But the basic idea is really simple. Sure. If you could see everything in history, then you know when it reached everybody. You cover that in your detailed example. You made like an annotation at the bottom of that. Not just that, half, the, half of it is all about how you do find the fame of famous I witnesses. Famous witnesses. That's, I mean, that's the majority of those pages, sure. right? Two thirds of the thing. More than two thirds of the thing is no, devoted to that. Most of it is, yeah. <laughs> 20 of the 29 pages is like finding True. Pages. Yeah. Uh, are we back on? Yeah. Okay. So, so the next question is. Thank you for laughing at my joke. I appreciate yeah, that. Two thirds. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>